Hi, welcome to part five of the Cloud Resume Challenge. And in the previous one, we set up a Lambda function, but I left a detail out. And I wanted you to troubleshoot it as we did in part two. So let's figure out what I left out and how do you overcome that issue. So in your Lambda function, the issue that you might have ran into if you, were, if you followed the previous part is the permissions. So we didn't provide our Lambda function the permission to either get or update the records in DynamoDB. And I'm just gonna show you really quick, how do you do that? And this was a test so that I can see how you know people troubleshoot and investigate what's the issue. I did the same thing in the part two. So here is our Lambda function. And if you go into configuration and you can see there is a permissions tab, you will see your execution role. And if I click on that role, it'll open an IAM window with different permissions that it has. And you can already see that mine already has the DynamoDB full access. If your Lambda function doesn't have this, that's why it was not able to get or update the viewer count in your DynamoDB table. How do you add this permission is by clicking on the add permission sign or drop down here and then attach policies. After clicking on that, just type in DynamoDB, click enter, and you will see certain permissions for DynamoDB. In my case, I used the full access since I need both read and write permissions for this Lambda function to update my DynamoDB viewer count. So there you go. That's the troubleshooting and investigation part of the issue that you might have seen in the previous one. Now let's move forward with our AWS Cloud Resume Challenge. So we have already covered the API. We have also done, we have also written the Lambda function in Python and infrastructure as code, I wanna leave it out for now. I wanna cover source control and CI CD front end. The reason being, I think we need a Git repository for our AWS Cloud Resume Challenge to be hosted at. And I think it'll make easier for me to follow next steps with CI CD and infrastructure as code. So what I'll do is I'll go into GitHub and you can use GitLab or any of the other providers. So maybe Bitbucket. The ideology is same. You wanna use some kind of source control or version control system. And in my GitHub, I'll click on new repository here and we'll name this AWS Cloud dash resume dash challenge and I'll select the owner here and you can also add the description right now or you can wait so I'll go down and you can see the already exists in this account so I'll name this test so the repository already exists in my account which is my AWS cloud resume challenge so I'll name this test and click on create repository so we'll we have this repository now on git I have my website folder locally you know the one we built uh, with the the one we built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So what I wanna do is go into your terminal. So I'll bring my terminal here and go into my downloads folder, and then we'll create a new directory called cloud resume challenge test. Okay, and now we'll CD into the cloud resume challenge test. Okay, so we are in the repository now. And then we have a few commands that you'll have to run. The first one being git init. This will initialize the repository on our local directory that we just created. And then what I want to do is I want to move my website folder into the cloud resume challenge. So what I'm just going to do is drag and drop. So now if you see my cloud resume challenge test folder, the one that we created locally has the website folder which contains the index.html, CSS, and JavaScript files. So if I do ls, you can see it has the website folder now. So the next command we wanna run is git add and then period. So this would add everything that's, so this would add the folder to git that we just created, okay. And now what I wanna do is git commit and we'll type our first commit message. So this could be initial commit and click enter. So you can see it created a new commit with the addition of all those files that were inside the website directory, right? And that's what we wanted to do. So now you can also follow along the instructions that are given by GitHub itself. The only thing that I have changed is instead of doing git add readme, since I added 
a lot more files than that. I just did git add period. Just remember that. So we'll do git branch dash m dot main. There we go. And now is the most important step where we will add the remote repository, which is on GitHub as you know, the remote repository that it's connected to. So we'll do control C and control V. And as you can see, it did add the remote repository, which is available on this URL. And now we'll just do git push u origin main. And once it's done that push, if I click on refresh here, you'll see the website folder. So now we have all of our content that we created inside the website folder in our GitHub repository. And yeah, we were able to achieve the source control step of the AWS Cloud Resume Challenge. So few things that I think are really important. One of them is add a readme file. So what that is, is if I show you my the AWS Cloud Resume Challenge repository that I have, you can see I have a very detailed readme file. So you can see there is a title, there is an architecture diagram, an introduction of what this repository is tech stack I have used, right? And then the links to the YouTube series that I'm creating, which is the one you are watching right now. So yeah, make sure you add the readme with proper instructions and this covers the source control part of it. Now I wanna move into setting up the CI CD where we'll be using GitHub Actions to deploy our website to S3 whenever we make changes so think of it this way, when we make changes to the website folder locally and we do git push, the changes will be pushed to the repository. But what I also want is for GitHub action to detect those changes and deploy those to AWS S3, right? Because that's where our front end is. That's where our website is hosted. So this part is known as CI CD and this is specifically for front end. If you don't know what CICD is and you're confused, I have a dedicated video on CICD. Go check it out. And if you know what CICD is, let's continue. So in order to use GitHub Actions, we need a special directory in our Git repository and it should be named dot GitHub slash workflows. So let's do that. Let's open our folder here in VS Code locally. There we go. So once you have that open, let's create that directory and name it that special name. Also, I'll link down the GitHub Actions video that I did and also the GitHub Actions documentation if you're interested. So let's name our repository. So dot GitHub and then another directory within the dot GitHub, which is workflows. Okay, so now we can create our YAML file. So GitHub Actions, you need to write YAML. So We'll name this front end CICD dot YAML. And there we go. So I'll time lapse this and then explain what the action is doing. Okay, so I have written my YAML here. So this is the GitHub action that is responsible to upload our new website content as we push it to our GitHub repository to S3. So as the name suggests, you know, pretty straightforward upload website to S3. You can name whatever you want. When does it get triggered? So it only gets triggered when there is a push on the main branch, which is the condition I want. And you can, you know, play with this by reading the documentation. If you want a trigger button that you can click on, if you want like a manual thing. Uh, for me, it automatically runs this action as soon as there is a push to the main branch. Jobs. It does a deploy using the latest Ubuntu container. And what steps does it use? So there's this S3 sync step that's available from Jake Jarvis, and I can show you on GitHub later. And it uses that GitHub action that's available on the marketplace with these environment properties, which are some secrets that I've set up inside GitHub. So you can use environment variables and secrets within GitHub because you don't want to give away your access key ID and access secret key. Why do you need this? Is because you need to authenticate GitHub Actions to be able to access your S3 bucket because only then it'll be able to perform the upload. So that's what's going on here. Make sure to change the AWS region to whatever your region was. Um, and here I have also set up the S3 bucket as a secret. So make sure you have set that secret in GitHub and I'll show you where you can do that. The source directory is website because that's where our content is. 
So if you named this something else, make sure to reflect that here. So if I save this and do a git push, and I'll show you how VS Code comes in handy too if you're not really good with Git CLI. So VS Code on the right hand side, you can see there is this Git logo and you can see this is the file that we added. So you can click on this plus sign and you can add your commit message on top here saying added CICD bar front end, right? And you can do the commit and clicking on sync will be Git push. There you go. So now if I go back to my repository here that we set up, it should have the .github slash workflows folder. And if I go into actions, you can see it has a new action now. The issue that it will not run is because I have not set up any of the environment variables, which you can set up as secrets, right? So you can see AWS S3 bucket is not set quitting. And I'll show you where you can do that by going into settings and then under secrets and variables, you'll see actions. And here you can have your environment variables and secrets. In my case, I need AWS S3 bucket name, AWS access key, and AWS secret key. And I can show you for my other repo, I do have that all set up. So this is my other repo. This is the action we have, right? And if I go into settings and go into secrets and variables, actions, you can see I have set those secrets here. So you can do that. And how does it look when the action passes is it does this action and you know you get those green checks when the website has been updated. That's how you set up the CI CD for the front end. And I can also show you the action we used, the Jake Jarvis one. So the Jake Jarvis here. So if I search for this, you can see it's an action on the GitHub marketplace. There you go. S3 sync, GitHub action to sync S3 bucket. And you can read more about, you know, different properties and arguments that you can have with this action. So in this video, we covered setting up our source control, which in the video was GitHub, and then also how to use GitHub actions for CI CD for our front end. In the next video, we'll be doing the IC stuff and CI CD for our backend. Comment down if you were able to find out the issue in the last one with the Lambda function permissions. If you were, awesome. If not, you know, in the intro of this video, I covered how you can give your Lambda function permissions. If you're loving this series, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because that's the best way to support this channel. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.